So this morning uh, I'm out in the woodlands and I'm doing a habitat and deer impact survey. I'm in Oxfordshire, uh, it's a new piece of woodland uh, and a client's putting in a, a grant application for the uh, WS1 deer grant. So we're going into the woodlands and we're going to walk in a determined route to try and cover the majority of the areas where deer are going to feed, bed down and look at the activities that deer signs leave and monitor that, marking it down on a, a proper sheet that we can then tally at the end to understand with a better idea what the population of the deer is and what the impact it's having on the woodlands. Got two woodlands to look at and I'm going to do one uh, at first light this morning, this is an hour after light and then one this evening so we can uh, hopefully see in our thermal some deer uh, movement and be able to register the deer movement we've got and look at browse lines, couches, racks within the forest, looking for what deer species are here. I've got a good idea already, but to, to determine what deer species are here and um, the appropriate um, long-term solution to getting the numbers reduced and managing them correctly. So we've walked into some hazel coppice and uh, established hazel coppice and um, there's quite a lot of fraying in here. This is reasonably new this season. This is uh, um, historical, but uh, you can see through the hazel where, the, um, where they've browsed as high as they can get. And uh, the majority of what I'm looking at here is, is I would say from roe deer, um, which is typical, they love coppice. So uh, beautiful piece of woodland and um, lots of uh, racks going through this um, crossing off a lane and into it and uh, any ivy you can see ivy here has been browsed up to this level all off there plenty of signs of deer impact here so I'm looking for racks within the wood uh, and on the edges of the wood, and this one's running parallel with the edge of the wood. Uh, and, and the scoring basis is rarely used, lightly used, frequently used, or heavily used. And if you look at this, I mean, it's early summer, and we have had a bit of rain, but this is very heavily used. And here I can see very easily three species of um, a footprint from deer, which is fallow, roe, and muntjac. Um, all favouring this as they skirt along this uh, hazel coppice. It just turned around behind me and you can see this blackthorn has all been browsed to this height. Again, indicating fallow deer. This is all quite historic, but um, again, deer are here and have been here for years in quite heavy numbers. So I'm just looking at um, this hawthorn, uh, which has got some historical scraping on it. You can see underneath uh, where the deer are favouring to be standing, probably um, uh, getting up on the back feet. And uh, you can see where, this is what it should look like. And this is what it looks like. So um, a lot of browsing impact. If you get down, you can actually, I'm probably the, the height of a roe deer now, crouched down like this. And you can just see all the way through the woodland at this height is just lots and lots of historic brows, which is, um, and you can see underneath this woodland is hardly any regeneration, even though there's lots of light coming through the canopy and it's been, you know, um, thinned out in the past. Um, the, the, these stands are like sycamore and these um, the, 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 the hazel that's in here are just um, there's, there's no regeneration of it really not a healthy one anyway um, which is what we're here to assess um, in my opinion this piece of uh, woodland definitely requires um, a lot more deer management uh, and a heavier cull than what's already in here. Uh, we've already seen a couple of muntjac 
and that's just walking around, you know, not stalking, just walking around. I brought my thermal along and I'm looking into blocks uh, and without doubt um, this morning already um, the, the muntjac presence, visual presence um, on the racks and things like that is, uh, is uh, it's already showing it to be reasonably high which, oh, behind it, road deer coming through. So on my activity sheet, deer scene, um, I'm just going to mark down a row there. I've been actually marking my munchak on the map and then I'll just, how many we've seen I'm going to transfer onto it. But you can see it's starting to fill the tallies up with scrapes, fraying, uh, racks within the woodland. We've only come two, three hundred metres uh, and the sheet's already starting to build up with clear signs of the deer species that are in here. I love doing this. It's, uh, it's like a deer stalker being nosy without his rifle. And, um, and it's just typical, I mean Oxfordshire, but it could be Berkshire, Buckinghamshire. The, the impact of deer, you know, is truly visible. And, and much of it's historical, you know, and uh, this is why we need to get on top of our deer species to protect uh, the long term of the woodlands that we've got. So some of the main indicators I'm immediately seeing are the amount of racks that we're seeing, which is the footpaths that deer create, and uh, well, all wildlife create, but obviously the deer leave the signs by uh, the sharpness of their hooves. You can see the slot of a deer as it moved in, and browse line on, on everything in here. So this is um, a compartment which is, um, uh, has, has got a lot of hazel in it and sycamore, uh, and then the ivy grown up a lot of the trees and you can see the ivy has just been browsed completely off. Hawthorn here is particularly favoured. And, um, and then when you look at the ground and we're looking for, you know, what are we under now? We're under some, um, s s some ash here uh, that hasn't been taken out. At the moment, this ash is still healthy, um, but there's no, there's no new trees coming up. They're not getting away everything um, I saw earlier on some ash that had fallen down and um, and it completely been browsed a new branch every leaf off it gone fallow deer will get up on the back feet and um, create a false impression and perhaps red deer in some ground you know what I mean because of how high they can browse and we've got those kind of clips of videos on our uh, on our trail cameras which in uh, you know endorses uh, what we're seeing So we've got to a little area of woodland that's got lots and lots of deer signs in it um, and Dan will pan round in a minute and you can see how open this is right so um, one thing I've got hardly any bramble here there's bramble about but there's no bramble establishing at all so there's nothing getting away and creating any bramble and um, here's a tree that's been overwhelmed with ivy and if you look at the, the ivy here you could argue that ivy's not a, not really a um, an important um, plant. There's lots of it about, but it's a key it's a key indicator for us to see a browse level. And you can see where it's it's overwhelmed this tree that's fallen down. It's completely stripped here up the tree, and then you've got where it starts, where the deer can't reach. And if you come under here, because they like being here. We've got a scrape here from looks like a roebuck where he's cleared the ground away, perhaps while he's been feeding. And I'm sure if you could see it, this would all be scent marked here. Fraying and all browse on the bottom of this hazel here. Just a, a little glade that you can see in, down in the corner of this wood where there's probably not much um, human activity that um, you know there's a, a lot of deer here if you look behind me there's a huge oak huge oak tree and there's no oak saplings at all underneath it you would expect them to be a few volunteers sticking up through the ground but nothing and this is what we're talking about regeneration of our woodland um, our natural indigenous tree species coming back through beech, sycamore, oak, 
lime, all those trees just not getting away, just failing because, um, because of the pressure from deer and their feeding habits. So this is a small glade, it's probably about a, an acre within the woodland, established woodland where they've um, cleared out some ash dieback and replanted mixed woodland uh, and they've used a Tubex 1.5 metre tree shelter designed to enhance the growth through a microclimate, forces the trees up and then provides uh, mechanical protection against deer and other animals brushing against them or fraying or trying to push them over. Lovely to see reinvestment by the uh, forest owners um, and putting in more forestry for the future after removing all the ash dieback. Okay, so this area of the woodland, um, we're seeing a lot of uh, deer impact on the bramble that's not above, so like thigh height. Uh, and then here's an oak that's got, with a, got a hanging bough. And um, if we had no deer here or a, a lower population of deer here, you would expect to see these boughs right down to the ground like this. But if I've just pushed that down, if I let that come back up, you can see where, again, it's been browsed fully at row, fallow deer height, uh, all the tips taken off. Again, another good indicator. The bramble here, you can see where the tips have been taken off systematically as the deer browse through here. I'd actually say, looking at this, it was very, very much roe deer, but historically probably fallow deer here. But uh, beautiful piece of woodland. And um, <laughs> we only have to go about 100 metres and we see a muntjac. So even, even in this early summer, um, June, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's incredible the, uh, uh, amount of deer that are actually in here that we visually can see. I wasn't expecting to see anyway, any, but that's why I brought the thermal. But we're just seeing them with the naked eye. But uh, we'll continue. So behind me is a holly, uh, and deer don't normally target holly unless they haven't got any other food. And what's interesting here is the, uh, the browse line is that of muntjac. So I know for a fact with all the other brows and the, um, the amount of, um, or the lack of regeneration in this wood, is that there are fallow deer and they're definitely roe deer in here, right? But what I'm thinking here as a bit of a woodland detective is, is there's, 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 there's that lack of food sometimes for muntjac in the winter because the, the other deer are browsing it above where their feed line is, that they're having to feed on the holly. So it's a really good indicator to me. And uh, we've seen many muntjac in this woodland as we've done the survey. Um, but again, key indicator. And Dan, if you pan around through this wood, again, you'll see um, in certain areas, there's no real understory, um, no regeneration of bramble. Uh, I mean, this is all sycamore above us, which has got quite a closed canopy. So sometimes you can't be fooled by the fact that it's perhaps deer. It's perhaps that for seven, eight months of the year, it's very dark under here. But you still, you still expect to see certain plants coming through uh, and certainly on the edges of it, some bramble, but there's nothing, there's nothing. And you, I'm just, this is just a random picking at, again, this plant here. Browsed, nibbled, eaten. Can be by hairs as well at this, at this level, but um, I would suggest it's munjack. Running through this piece of woodland is a power line. Electricity board maintains that, so they've, they've floored all the hazel through here that was going up, so probably, I don't know, three, four years ago. And you can see all this regen of the hazel stool, and you can see very, very clearly here where up to roe deer height, there's um, complete browse all the way through it. It's, it's perfect uh, an indicator for us. On, on nearly every um, stall is some fraying, damage, and um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if this was your woodland, I mean, this is a, a concentrated piece of maybe 150 metres by 30 metres, but it's just absolutely annihilated by deer, so um, completely browsed. 
it's probably actually it's probably doing the woodland some, some some good because it's acting like a buffer strip to be honest. So it's a like a particular feed area, and if it was my woodland, I would be recommending it. I will definitely have a high seat on here um, because we've got the, the track on the, the left of it, and then this beautiful cover here where the deer can, can couch up and uh, and feed uh, and get some sun and get some shade. Um, absolutely perfect. So. Uh, any hazel in your woodland, always head for that and you will see what you've got. Within our survey, uh, I use the um, app What Three Words, and this means I can take images of uh, deer signs, impacts, and damage, and, uh, and then I can um, use those images with, to illustrate my um, survey uh, and actually have um, you know, real time proof of the damage that's being sustained. And, and key points and reference points for us to come back and look at those the damage and see if how it's either improving or getting worse. Well that concludes our survey. We've been in the woods three and a half hours. We've done three and a half, four K uh, in a big loop, but then going into the compartments that we really feel have got um, uh, a really good opportunity for deer uh, and, and, and the damage that deer cause or the impacts they're having on the uh, uh, on the woodland here. I've marked down as we've gone round onto the uh, deer activity sheet that you download off the Commission Forestry Commission site uh, and you can put down all the different signs um, uh, and what you've visually seen, uh, all the indicators onto a tally chart, an activity chart and from that I can determine whether the, there's a score of low, medium or high and that all collates itself down and then this um, field sheet I then tra transfer electronically onto the deer survey sheet that then goes forward with the, uh, uh, with the uh, application by the landowner of the woodland.